our enemies close? I couldn't say. I am beloved by all and have no enemies. <laughs> Welcome to my channel. Today, I'm super excited to have the amazing Josh Weller with me. Hello, Josh. Hi. Hi, Mira. How are you? I'm good. I'm good. So Josh and I know each other from days of yore when we were both in bands, essentially, because when we both first met, we were both musicians. Mm -hmm. oh, yeah, we've known each other for like 15 years. Oh, <laughs> we're so Isn't that terrifying. Yeah, that's so awful. It's really awful, but at least we lived through the good days. <laughs> I mean, I think when we were little, we were worried about Cold War and the nuclear bomb, right? Uh, we or our elders? Well, I remember when, I, you know, when you were at school, like you were reading books like Zed for Zachariah. And stuff. oh, no, I never I think I, I think I I think I came along after that. Maybe, yeah, maybe you were. I never had to, yeah, I never had to hide under a table at school or anything like that. <laughs> that was, those days were, were, were past. Yeah. Well, I think, I think maybe that was my impending doom and the Falklands War. But nowadays, if you're a little kiddie, woo, there's a lot going on. So, yeah, yeah, it must be so awkward to have had to homes like I, I, my friend's kids who got their degrees like, on virtual calls is just like that must really mess up your social skills completely yeah so lucky for us we were like tooling around just being in bands enjoying all the benefits of that government trying 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 to be in bands i think yeah yeah it's yeah. safe to say neither of us hassled the Made top it. yeah <laughs> We didn't have any yeah. success. Yeah, it's great to say that. Thanks for coming to our support meeting. But um, <laughs> I'm really excited to talk to you because recently you appeared in season three of The Witcher. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. So, so I I don't know how the franchise would survive without me. <laughs> well, let me ask you some questions. In the in the two episodes of it that I'm in, uh, I I am in The Witcher, but I'm not. I'm not in The Witcher. I'm in it for a bit, but, yeah. but they'd be fine. I'm, I'm not a crucial plotline of the show. Well, let's put it this way. If you look at the global population and how many of the global population have been in The Witcher. Yeah, I came out of the, I went to see Indiana Jones yesterday evening. Yeah. And when I, when I came out, there was a girl outside the pub explaining The Witcher to her friends. <laughs> And that's the first time when I've been like, oh, yeah, I was in that. And and I got, um, and I've been recognized as well, which is a, like a, which is like a kind of a first. That's so cool. So mm. let me talk a little bit about your nerd credentials. So okay. firstly, what did you know about The Witcher and how excited or meaningful was it to you that this show was coming? You can be honest. Um, I'll be honest. I So here's what happened. I got. I I audition for stuff all the time. So I get sent things saying, um, you know, can you do a self-tape for this? And I taped for it and I didn't know what it was for, but my agent was like, we think it's The Witcher, but it had a code name that I don't think I'm allowed, still not allowed to say. Okay. Um, they film it under these different names, obviously. So, you know, like when they made um, uh, The Empire Strikes Back, I think that was called Blue Harvest was the studio name for it. Yeah. Um, and so I auditioned and I died in the audition. You and had then to I, I just sort of cut it when I get killed, basically. Okay. And then I think I went to an audition and then I got the part and then they unkilled the character. So I don't die mm. because I don't know in my head. Yeah, I would. It would be really cool if that's because they go, oh, we can maybe bring that guy back. But it's probably just because it's expensive to kill someone, realistically. Like, 
the thing you really learn about and what I've learned as a Star Trek fan as well is like just how much of the show is down to pending budgets and, and shoot dates. So you have to have it done. So my my I would like to think that they kept me alive because like they were like, oh, he's a great character. Um, um, but it's probably not that. <laughs> and uh, so anyway, I auditioned and then I went, oh, shit, I can't act. Um, so I've never done an act, I, you know, so I went to an acting teacher because I think the reason I got the part is because I played. One of the things I've learned in auditions is just be you and play to your strengths uh -huh. and don't try and be what you think they want just be you and like casting directors all they want to do for smaller roles in shows is just find the person and tick that off and stop worrying about it and i think that i sort of panicked and went to a great acting coach i went to lee knight um who i met at a wedding like probably around the time i met you oh my and God. um he gave me a couple of classes and he was so good because all he would do is um he would make me do stand up Mm. and then when he like snapped his fingers I had to go into the park because I think he could see that I was bad and um so again even he whether it was said or not he was like very much getting me to just play to my strengths mm. um and then I sort of went oh shit I should probably watch this show yes um so then I and not again not to I hope the fans of your show channel and the fans of the show don't take this personally but I'm not a big fantasy I'm a big sci-fi yeah like I have a Star Trek tattoo like I go to all the cons I didn't like, know you had um, a Star Trek tattoo Josh yeah 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 can we see yeah. and my and up until about 20 minutes ago I was wearing my Star Trek dressing gown as well <laughs> why didn't you um <laughs> that I can't show you because I it's on my leg and I just had knee surgery so I can't if I showed you I'd it would result in the end of this interview in an okay. insubordinate amount of pain but um, I, yeah, did acting classes um, and then I put on season one, episode one, and then I got like 10 minutes in and was like, come on. Um, and uh, <laughs> so, so then watched, I, I- you saying you watched 10 yeah. minutes? Okay. I watched, I, I watched like 10 minutes and I was like, ah, I get it. Everyone hates The Witcher. And I called my mate uh mark who's an, who is a, a massive comic book computer game nerd and i and i just went all right let's sit down for an hour and tell me everything about the witcher yeah. which i think is actually more helpful than um watching it because when you're watching it you're i think you don't want to try and interpret what people want so i found out all about the show kind of fell in love with it a little bit and then i i was like oh shit i bet if i watch season two there's like a recap so I watched the beginning of season two and was like okay cool okay I kind of get the crucial plot points of season one and then I, and the other thing I sh realistically I probably should have done is like learn who plays who so I learned all my lines and learned who was in my scenes but then it was only on the first day that I realized that m my first scene was with Henry Cavill so like so like my first it wasn't my first on-screen acting. Like I did, I did a sitcom for Channel Four, but they wrote me out of the show <laughs> after it got commissioned. <laughs> so I did the pilot, and it was a blessing in disguise because I wouldn't have been able to do The Witcher. And The Witcher is, it was, you know, it's a huge show. Yeah. And it was, it was more money. Yeah. Um, and um, so I, yeah, I kind of crapped myself on the first day and was like, oh, I've got to act like for the first time for netflix with superman <laughs> shit yeah um but uh yeah it, i mean i think it went okay well um, in in the warhammer world where a lot of i do a lot of videos around warhammer henry cavill is kind of yeah one of my favorite because he is a self-proclaimed nerd and he has warhammer armies and we're hoping there are whispers that he's taking part in a big warhammer franchise so, yeah, I, I think I read about that. So Amazon, no, someone is financing like a Warhammer universe and he's, because that's why I thought he left The Witcher was right. to do Warhammer. So that was my, that was kind of what I assumed. I, th I thought he was either going to be James Bond, Superman or or Warhammer. Yeah. Um, but he could probably do any or all of those. Um, yeah. Well, you but, don't... Uh, 
I mean, there's so much speculation uh, around why he's not doing Witcher. I'm really sad because I've really enjoyed his performance in The Witcher. But what was it like mm-hmm. to act against Henry Cavill? What was that experience like? Um, did, you, did you have that thing said- where you don't, you're just put on set and you just act? Or did you have any chance to kind of talk to anybody? Um, no, the director Ganja, who has she's just done Wednesday, which is also another yeah, huge. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. So she did the first episode of The Witcher that I was in, and she was like, just I think she's Brazilian, I think Brazilian American, or I'm not sure, but um, she was so good. And like, I remember she came up to me on the first day and she was like, oh my god, I know, because because I in the audition, I played a song which was kind of what I was saying before. Like, I just thought, well, I'll just do what I, because it says he plays a song. And I was like, well, I might as well write. I've got the lyrics. I might as well write to it and perform it. And I think that's what got me the part. Um, and on the first day, she came up to me in my trailer and was like, hey, I just want you to know, like, I know that they've written a different song, but mm-hmm. I keep singing your one. And like all those little things. And like, I did one take and she went, oh, you need to go again because you can hear me laughing on the take. <laughs> And like, you know, little things like that, that just make you feel really comfortable and like, and make you feel as though you're contributing something new to a show that's already established. And she was, I mean, she's going to be massive, I think. I mean, she's already doing fine, but I, it's like, she's like a ticking time bomb of mega success. She was so brilliant. Amazing. So you were made to feel very welcome on set. And then when you had to kind of, yeah be doing the acting and say your words and stuff. Yeah. Like, is that like an out body experience? Yeah, I think I've learned since then, like I can't say, I don't think I can say what the show is, but I've just done an episode with, this is the mad thing. So like my two main kind of acting things, you know, in the last couple of months was, first one was with Henry Cavill and then I just did a one with Ewan McGregor, <laughs> um, which was also just, in like with ha- you know like you have you have like you have to just swallow down that thing where you're going oh my fucking god it's Obi Wan <laughs> Kenobi yes you, like you, how can you not go <laughs> that's the guy hello there or, you know yeah. like how can you all the quotes are like I've had it in the past where <laughs> sorry I've sort of hung out with m- famous musicians and like I'm I'm kind of humming their song in my head and I'm like just fucking calm down. <laughs> um and but with Henry the the only thing that I could really tell you that's funny is that um the first scene was on a boat yeah and he I am in this pretentious band so there's I think there's a character in the games called uh, Valdo Marx who's like a rival to Jaskia yeah so I was playing Valdo I was playing Boris who's like Valdo's sort of right hand man and Nathan who played Valdo who was also excellent we kind of we're talking before and we we decide I don't know I haven't watched the show so I don't know if they kept it in but we decided to play it like we're in love with each other <laughs> and we were like like what if Nathan's really like Valdo's really protective of Boris but they have this sort of there's a bit in Zoolander where um Will Ferrell throws his foamy latte on his assistant are you not aware that I get farty and bloated with a foamy latte and then they have this like mm, Mm. like and they have this like sex this weird sexual tension so I was kind of kind of ripping that off um but when we did when I did the first scene with Henry and no one told me which I would have appreciated in retrospect because I said my my first line yeah and he was on the other side of the boat so he wasn't even he didn't really need to be there because it was just for eyeline but he's such a pro that he stays on when he's not even on camera and a lot of actors will leave uh, yeah. Like I was watching, um, I was watching the early two thousands classic "What Women Want" the other day. Yep, amazing. And Great. in this, in the front on scenes in Helen Hunt's apartment with Mel Gibson, when they're doing the behind shots, you can just tell that it's not them. They're not acting to each other. And Henry was like there the whole time because he's a pro. Yeah. And um, no one told me, so I said my line, and then Henry's on the other side of this boat, and he just goes and it was so quiet because he's the witcher and he does the voice but i didn't know that that about that voice because i hadn't watched it but it, i couldn't hear him and he was like Ugh. and i genuinely on the first day went 
I was like, I can't <laughs> hear you. So, and then I just went, okay, I'm not going to ask him to shout. Yeah. Like, I'm not going to tell Superman what to do. Nice. So I just, I just sort of pretended that he might have finished his line and then said my next line. And the other gift with television acting as well is that they edit it so much that yeah. even if there's like a two second delay, it doesn't matter that much. Yeah. Wow. So did you get to touch Henry Cavill? Um, uh, no. No. Wow. Opportunity. Maybe, maybe in his, maybe in his heart, I touched yeah. him emotionally. And um, yeah. So you were on this very like this is one of the big action sh scenes in season three. There's basically like a, a lake monster, and it comes up. Ishna and Ishna. Yeah. Yeah. Very. Yeah. Eshna. Eshna. Ishna. Something like that. You say tomato and uh, and so the this sea monster comes along, and I'm thinking, oh wow. Josh gets to be in a scene with a monster, but you're the one that gets smacked by the monster and flies across the boat. And I've seen pictures yeah. where you have had a stunt double. So yeah. what? tell us yeah. a little bit about that. Do some BTS and describe. Yeah. Um, so first of all, I, I assumed that I died. And then when I got there, they went, no, 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 you don't die, which was great because they wrote us into the following episode, which I don't think they, they'd finished the script of, or I don't think that they really thought about there being a band at the ball in the next episode. And um, so I did different takes where like, they were like, now the spike of the monsters coming through your chest and killing you, we'll just get that just in case. And there's just this dude in a green leotard who the stunt guys are doing all the work as well. Like I begged them to let me do one stunt and they let me fall like two feet off the ground. <laughs> and. And then they were like, do you want to wear the Kevlar bodysuit that we all wear? And I just went, nah, 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 I'll be fine. And then about 10 takes in, I was like, this hurts a lot. Um, and yeah, a guy called Anon, uh, Anon who's the, again, like all these stunt guys are just so brilliant and such pros. And I'm a big Formula One fan. And I remember one of them uh, used to race with go-karts with Max Verstappen, who's the world champion, two-time world champion, one time, one time world champion um two if you count cheating but um he uh he, he you know so immediately I was just chatting away with him and he was telling me where to where I can go like karting to learn mm -hmm. how to race cars and um but it was it was hilarious seeing someone dressed up as me yeah but but like way better looking and hench you know yeah the doppelganger effect yeah exactly it was very um What's that film? Multiplicity, the, the Michael Keaton film. Do you remember yeah. that? And how do you act that you're being like skewered by a sea monster? Did you just go, I'm going to just go ham and just do it? Like, I think I knew that they weren't going to kill me because it had come up a few times. So when they they pulled me, they did about probably eight, ten takes where they where the guy pulls you to the side. And it's just, just you know, it's just, it's not that hard to go, ah! Like, you know, that's all I did. Yeah. And then, and then I did, I, I, again, I haven't watched it, um, but I, I went to the, you had these things called ADR sessions afterwards, which is where you go and you, if they haven't captured your audio very well, you have to say your lines again. Yeah. And um, when they, when I got thrown over the boat, I said to them, I was like, can you just let me record like a couple of screens? Cause I really want to do like a Homer Simpson, like a proper Homer Simpson scream. Yeah. Um, so I, I hope that they've, I think that they've kept that in there. So um, what, what is the reason for you not watching the, because they're great episodes. They're so fun. I don't know. It just, it just feels weird to sit alone and watch yourself. I, it I just feels a bit. It. Yeah. You, okay, great. Well, if you want to, if you want to come for a watch party, but also I'm, I don't know how much they've left in of the part as well. And if they've cut it down. Josh, there's gonna... loads of you and you have a line and they do like close-ups when you're doing, you're doing very good. Yeah, reaction. but I I think, I think I had more than, I think I had like a full scene. So I don't know how much they've left in. So, and also it's not just that. It's also just, um, I've got like, I, I'm, I gig every night. So yeah. I haven't, you know, I, it's not really uh, something I've had a minute to, to do yet. So I will get around to it. Yeah. Well, you, we should definitely do a react or a discussion video or podcast after that. Okay, great. Awesome. Yeah, great. That but sounds, so that you, sounds 
fun. You also appeared in the ballroom scene in El- Eretruza. So mm-hmm. that looked like a complicated set. There looked like there were about 200 characters on there and there was dancing and you were having to walk through people while playing. So could you tell us a little bit about that? Like- yeah, like I, I remember the first take, we just sort of, me and Nathan just sort of performed it. And then afterwards they went, okay, now you need to do that every take for the next two weeks. So you were actually we were like, performing and singing. Yeah, and then the song, I don't know how much of the song they left in, but they did shoot it like a music video. So we actually oh, re-rehearsed. The song is huge. It's like a... Is a, it? Yeah, it's like a motif that keeps coming back. It's, uh, it's called All Is Not As It Seems, isn't it? That's the song. Yeah. Yes, it's a banger. And, and, but then Joe, the composer, is a genius as well. Like, he's he's as well as a really nice guy he's so talented with he, like hearing snippets of it because they sent us loads of stuff before it came out and i was like oh, okay this is like these are good songs like as a fan of pop music the guy can write a chorus yeah and um i yeah we ju- we choreographed the dance ourselves and again i don't know how much they kept in because there's one bit where me and nathan sort of he like twerks into my crotch I, I don't um, remember that bit, but I would love to see that. I hope. That's- I mean, there was, there, yeah, there was a moment where the, when Henry has a fight with someone in that scene that I think is, spoiler alert, um, I think that he, I think it's like staged, like they've staged the fight yeah. somewhere in the episode beforehand. And um, when they do that and everyone's shocked, I, I, Nathan was behind me and I put my hand on his cheek and, they, and we were like, why don't we play it like it's sort of making us horny? Um, and, uh, it's a choice. <laughs> yeah, it's a choice. It's, what do you do? And, um, so I, I remember the first AD, the first assistant director or the assistant director, someone came over to me and just was like, Hey, can you, um, not do that? <laughs> <laughs> huh? I love you. So I, yeah, thanks. I hope <laughs> they kept that taken, but the song was, um, I mean, being honest with you, it was like, it was a, pain in the ass because it was you know you do the same song for two weeks over right. and over and over and also I did this thing where I was sort of I was playing the character like a real sort of nerdy creep and he had this like face and I, and after the first day like my face like hurt because we I've been doing it for eight hours and then for two weeks we just had to stand there and I had to like do mm. this like Boris face um and I had like muscle pain in my jaw for about a week after the shoot well if Um, it's any consolation I was very nervous because I was thinking what if Josh is like only in this for a second what if Josh is terrible and have to be like yeah yeah, it's really good but part, part of the thing I really noticed is your facials were so on point like you could see the character oh that's cool from, you know, from the boat, the way that you had snarky face and then like sucky uppy face. So I think that was worth the pain that you went through, to be honest. Okay, well, that's good. I'm glad. I'm glad that it worked. But um, yeah, I mean, what else can I tell you? It was, oh, it was, it was, the, it, we shot it when it was 40 degrees in England while we were shooting. And I think every other show had shut down. Uh, maybe not. I think that was just something someone told me. That might not be true, but um it was so hot and we were in this big warehouse that it had air conditioning, but you know, when you like rent an Airbnb and it says it has Wi-Fi, but it kind of doesn't have Wi-Fi. Yeah. It has Wi-Fi, but only for sending text messages on a 32, 10, yeah. 20 years ago. And, um, and it was super dusty and they had op- loads of open fires in the, in the ballroom. And I was wearing three layers of velvet. Wow. So, it was like the stickiest, and I've done like, you know, my old band did the Vans Warp Tour, which is like yeah. the hot, the hottest summer tour, weather-wise, that you can yeah. do. I remember you played in the desert at like midday on the Warp Tour, so. Yeah, yeah. I remember nearly fainting in Chicago, like properly like having to sit down during the show. And mm-hmm. this was as, this was as intense as yeah. that it was a it was a real like um and also you know you're getting you're wrapping at like 10 p.m and then they pick you up at 5 a.m so there's not much time for like and, and are you like staying at home or are you like yeah which in retrospect was probably a bit of a mistake because i we they were shooting 
west of London and I live in East London. So it was like two hours there and back every day. But then my driver was like a legend and I got to know him really well and now we're friends. So oh, it was worth it. So when you're in on set for two weeks in a really big scene like that, there must be a lot of standing around. So were you like chatting to everybody and making friends or do you have to be like- Yeah, I mean, I, I don't really go on to things like that or in any capacity where I try and sort of, um, sort of I, I'm never trying to like network at those things. I just want to go in and be like, be funny and be nice. And that's all you need to do. Um, and I think really bonding with the team that made it came later when I did the, when I was doing all my voiceover stuff. Yeah. And cause I, you know, I, when they were saying in the room though, and again, I don't know how much is left in and there's a couple of lines that, um, I ad libbed in the room where I just had the, the, everyone was pissing themselves. And that's like, as a comedian, that's all you really want to do. Right. And um, and I remember they were like, oh, there's a close up of Henry here. Can you just say something in the background? And I just I think I said, um, well, Liam Hemsworth looks amazing. <laughs> oh, my gosh. Well, I was and then I did this. Oh, I did this other one. Sorry, sorry. I did, um, what was the other one? I did something else where I was sort of they said, can you just riff something? And I just sort of started slagging off Valdo, like being like, oh, it's always Valdo, Valdo. I was like, we're a fucking band. <laughs> <laughs> like it's not Billy Joe Armstrong. I was like, it's Green Day. It's not Robert Plant. It's Led Zeppelin. And I just named all these front men. <laughs> and uh, and then when I went back in for the other session, they'd kept it in. And I was like, are they just going to keep this in as like an in joke, really quietly in the background? So maybe that stuff's still in there. But I mean, oh. you probably have to turn the volume up very loud. Yeah. Well, no, I definitely think you are like funny and being a comedian. I think they got they got your really good part because they got your musicality in there and your facial expressions and everything. So, yeah, I keep emailing the producer of the show, be it just saying Boris spinoff question mark. <laughs> <laughs> well, this is the thing, like historically, like, you know, Valdo is, uh, you know, he is a thorn in the side of Yaskir, right? So mm -hmm. why wouldn't he pop up again? Yeah, I mean, they could do it without me, if we're being frank, like it's Valdo Marx, like I'm just his, his you know lots of bass players leave bands and nobody notices you know so uh, you know they could realistically be fine without boris yeah. um but it would be fun to do some it would be it would just be fun to act with nathan again because he's brilliant but yeah. it would also be fun to do some more comedy as that character because i kind of kind of like him you know yeah so you would do it if they were like come back you'd be like yay and then you'd Get your velvet. Back. Would, would I? Would I be in The Witcher again? The yeah. Netflix's biggest show. <laughs> yeah, yeah, and it would be cool. It would be, I'm very, really curious to see what Liam Hemsworth mm. does with it. I know that the fans, obviously, and I totally understand. Like the fans, you know, it wasn't Blink One Eighty Two without Tom DeLonge for me. <laughs> and as much as I love Alkaline Trio, and I think Matt Skiba is one of the genre's best songwriters, it wasn't Blink-182. So yeah. I can see why the fans are pissed. Um, same with Dr. Pulaski in Star Trek The Next yeah. Generation Season 2. She's no Beverly Crusher. Um, well, yeah, she's not, she, she had her place, but... She did, yeah, and she, and she bought a lot. I really liked her character, the personality that she added to it, yeah. um, but she wasn't as good as Beverly, and I think Liam's got a challenge ahead of him, but I think that, you know... Liam Hemsworth, he'll be fine. So do, did you get to, when when you're on set, are the principals interested in talking to everyone else? Or are they just like, this is really yeah. carrying a show? I had a, really, I had a funny moment with Henry where I was convinced that one of the riggers was this famous Instagram comedian, because most Instagram comedians have day jobs. Right, right. And he, and he was this gorgeous, like, not gorgeous like me, but he was mixed race like me. And uh, he was this gorgeous mixed race dude with these hot arms and he was setting off all the explosions. And I said to Henry, I was like, I think that's the guy from Instagram, the famous, I can't remember the, uh, the guy's name right now. And Henry was like, uh, show me. And I showed him the profile. And yeah. Henry was like looking at my phone and then looking at the guy and was like, I think it is him. And we had this <laughs> whole debate. And um, 
then uh, I sort of I was looking at him more on, on it later on in the day, and I was like, no, it's not him. And Henry on lunch break came to my trailer and knocked on the door and was like, hey, I've been looking at him, and uh, I think if you look at the profile ridge of his nose, it's you can tell that it's not him. And we had this, and this whole conversation, and I was like, we could just ask him. We could just we could just go up and go, is this you? Yeah. And um, but we didn't, and I'm glad we didn't because it was funny. But um, I think I said to him, I was like, yeah, you know what the giveaway is, is that it's clearly a different person. <laughs> um, and I also I was on the same pee cycle as Henry as well. I remember that, like we kept going to the toilet at the same time. Oh, pee cycle. Love it. Yeah, and I, I did say to him, we came out of the toilet after like the third time on the same day, and I said. Um, I think I did that peep show quote and I think I said I I was like um I wasn't listening and he went good and I went and I, and I just went but I heard everything and uh yeah it was yeah he's such a nice like I think that's a good sign if you were feeling happy enough to be yourself because you would have said that to anyone you were on a peace cycle with <laughs> yeah that is yeah, that's, that's just you Josh but I really want you to ask your agent if you can do more fantasy work so I, I think- would love that I just auditioned for, um, again, I can't say what it is. I've signed an NDA, but another Netflix fantasy show. So, but I auditioned for last season and didn't get it. So, but um, this is your, this is your time. You know, you're slowly going to build up your, you know, your CV, and people are going to be like, "That's the funny person." But um, yeah, but I'm, what I really want is, I just want like, uh, I want to be on Star Trek. That's what I really like. No, I, well, that's all talk, I want to do. Let's talk about Star Trek because. We don't have, I've always thought of you as my cool friend. We don't have that much in common outside of really Star Trek is our like no point. Did you say core friend or cool friend? Cool. I think you're oh. like cool friends. I'm not, I'm not cool, but we are, we are core friends. I'll, I'll, yeah, we are. I'll go with and, that. Yeah. And I kind of look up to you in a way because you were a solo artist and you were doing everything like yourself on the front line. Whereas I've always mm. had bands and stuff and scenes and things to hide behind. So, yeah. um, but I love that there's so many people on the internet and, I, internet and I have so many friends, so few of them happy to discuss DS9 episodes or yeah. what I mean. And it like you do. So I'm, and I love Star Trek. Um, my dad introduced yeah. me little and I stuck with it ever since and we you know I'm always waiting for you to finish watching Picard so I've got someone to talk to you about so I resent the accusation that you watch it before me um, <laughs> okay it's you that it's you. <laughs> is a, a, an insult because I have my friend in Texas's um Paramount Plus login so because the uh <laughs> The Picard episodes and the first season of Strange New Worlds came out yeah. a day early in America. So I would get home from gigs, make a Negroni and or take a weed gummy and just watch, <laughs> especially season three of Picard. Like, I think I cried during every episode. So much good stuff. The, yeah, and The, you are the bit where Seven of Nine, where she, sh- sorry, the bit where Seven shows Jack Crusher Voyager. I was a, a mess. Mate, it yeah. was... It was completely written. Every episode was written to, you know, to pull at the heartstrings, essentially. And then bringing Ro in to do that to her. Like, they were showing I, yeah. mercy. They were grinding our emotions. I, I saw an interview with Terry Metalis where he said, um, by the way, Terry Metalis followed me on Instagram the other day. See, you are my cool friend. Isn't that insane? Like, I just sort of looked at it. Like Jerry Ryan followed me on Twitter in probably January. Yeah, I remember that. And I was like, I, I just yeah, because I text you being like, oh, ah! like, <laughs> um, but I saw an interview with Jeremy Sanders where I think he said I might be wrong, but I think he said they wanted to keep Row alive, but it was too expensive visually to turn the ship back and get it back <laughs> on the Titan, so they just blew it up. I think that was something like that. Yeah. But um, I mean, in order for you to be on Star Trek, you just have to keep talking about it and getting these people to follow you, surely. But do you have to be based in LA to do all this stuff? No, there's a lot of Brits in Strange New Worlds. But again, like, I just have to, it's, I don't, it would be too much of an ideal world if it's just, if I got the part from Instagram. Um, I think that it would, uh, yeah, I, it, it's when the auditions come through that you just beg, 
you know, like your agent to be like, hey, can you get me anything on like any any audition for Star Trek? Yeah. Um, when, when did but, you uh, when did you pick up your agent, Josh? Because I've known you mostly for comedy and music. So did, mm. have you got an overlapping agent, or how did that come about? No, no. But, music music was like always. I'm sure you'll relate. It was always an uphill struggle. Like. They're both entertainment and the arts are naturally just meritocracies. I think there's a lot more opportunities in music for less talented people. Uh, but at the end of the day, only the good survive and, mm -hmm. and float to the top. And I think that in music, everything I kind of, all my aspirations, everything I hoped for, you know, getting an agent, getting a record deal, it never came. And it was a real, I remember reading like Bob Dylan's book and he said something like you know and the guy saw me play and then signed me and it's like that cigar chomping in the 60s kind of dream of someone going ah, i love your demo if you're going to be a star kid and like i never had that it was always always um difficult and i didn't get you know uh i got a record deal but i got dropped within a year and even that was in i got signed in france because every label in the uk turned me down and i understand why and i don't begrudge any of their decisions <laughs> no I just I just wasn't very good and um and I think that in comedy it's like you everything just good, everybody sorry carry on say you that again sorry. Good. you are good yeah I'm not that good I was fine I was fine I did as I did so well considering my lack of talent <laughs> and <laughs> um and I think that comedy just I never had to try I kind of started doing stand-up but I did I did go in and still do go in hard like you have to do six five six shows a week to get right. good you have to go to open mic you have to just keep showing up and you no one gets lucky you might get lucky with being naturally uh having a good stage presence and stuff like that but it's all about a putting in the hard work and I did do that I did do you know two two and a half years of just like grueling stand-up but I got signed like I got an agent within like a year and they kind of just all came along and offered me you know I had a few people try and sign me and then the pandemic hit and I just thought well that's my typical luck you know mm. no one's ever going to work again and I got signed during the pandemic yeah um which again was a blessing in disguise because it allowed me to you know, because no one could work on stand up, but I got to really work on online content. And I don't think I'm particularly good at it. But that's that's another certain... part. Right? I remember Angry Boy podcast, which kind of kept me and a lot of people sane. Um, <laughs> your um, yeah. Instagram, I, I urge everyone to follow Instagram because you're one of those rare people who will give new material out on Instagram. So you'll think, mm. it seems to me, you think of a skit and you just deliver it for us. So there's loads of fresh, funny content all the time on your Insta. So yeah, I've been quite lucky with The Witcher because I haven't had to do any fucking content for a while. Which is, sometimes you really fall out of love with it because it feels like it feels like it's not work, and that you, I always want to be working. And but the reality of Instagram is that it. I wouldn't say it's it's made me have a career, but it's a really. I see it as like an interactive business card, really. Right. So like. If any agent or casting agent or whatever is looking at, at my tape and then they check me out on Instagram, I know that, that I don't know if they're going to laugh, but I know I've been funny in what I think is funny. Yeah. So I know that there's stuff out there that I'm proud of. And you've got, and, um, you've got, a yeah, fun. like, well, it's getting bigger, but it's not, it's only like 16,000 or something like that, but it's still, um, the thing that's really helped is there's a, uh, Canadian comedian called Claire House and she during the pandemic I was like I think I want to start like a Formula One podcast and I think I want to do like music no I think I said I don't want to do music stuff because I want to just be a stand-up I, I entered stand-up much with that punk rock sensibility that was like I just want to have a microphone and I don't want to talk about music I just want to go and do you know comedy in the traditional hardcore sense and she was like no 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 lean into your niche like lean into it find the things that you have in your like comedy arsenal that no one else has and a lot of that has come out in sort of taking the piss out of the music industry or taking the piss out of genres of music which i keep getting shit for like i have this I arctic monkeys sort of piss take at the minute that's gone mad but it I all comes from 
love. Yeah. Like you can't mock a genre effectively unless you like it. It's no, that. You lived and breathed it. Like this was your life for so long. I feel you've earned the right. And it's kind of taken the piss out of you, your her your heritage as being a musician, doing all the things that we joke about. Um, mm. I'm, I'm aware that you have to peel off soon. So I'm going to, I just want to talk to you about all the things all the time. So maybe. Yeah, I'll yeah, no, I've got some time. I've got like 15 minutes. Just to say, listeners, viewers, Josh is heading off to meet somebody else who was in The Witcher with him. And I'm hopefully going to speak yeah. to him. But the funny thing yeah, is... Yeah, and Harvey, Harvey got starstruck when he saw you at my gig. I got... Well, it was so, so mad. I'm a massive Josh fan. Harvey's a massive Josh fan. It was the first night we met and Harvey was like, well, you told me, Harvey knows... <laughs> Harvey said to you, do you have a friend? Why are you commenting on Mira's... No, why is Mira from Warhammer YouTube commenting on your YouTube? And you were like... Yeah, and I know she's an old mate. But then when you arrived at my gig, he was like, oh my God, that's Mira, that's Mira Manga. <laughs> But I was like, oh my God, it's an actor. You know, it was very cool. I mean, that's that's what I really love. As I'm older, you know, you were like, I just want to be nice and funny. And you called in to check on me when I had a bad thing happen to me. And Harvey just seems really lovely. That loveliness, that bubble of people who care and are being creative, that needs to be protected because that's what's uplifting and joyful in life now. Not um, the cynicism and coolness and let's get over people by climbing over corpses. So... Yeah, I really know it's a weird, weird and not to I don't there's no point barreling down this rabbit hole, but this like sort of addiction to offense and addiction to um pushing people down is like it's fucking wild. It's like it's it's and you know, even that, like even just through making uh like I I commented on Star Trek's Instagram yesterday, and yeah. I just have this running thing that I do just for me, because it's funny for me. Whenever Star Trek Instagram does a post. I replied just saying, "Yeah, but why did Janeway kill two Vix?" That's all I. <laughs> right. <laughs> right. And which is just funny. Yeah, it's just funny. It's a, just a funny thing for, that I think is funny for me. Yes. Yeah. And um, and then someone replied, being like, "We get it. You're a misogynist." And I was like, "How is that? What a fake captain who killed a fake alien?" Which, if you want to get into the logic, if we want to live in the reality of the Delta Quadrant, she killed two, if, if Riker can survive with a twin in the buffer stream and they can separate them both and they can both live lives, yeah. she didn't need to kill two bigs. They would have had that technology to separate the both of them. They would have been able so to see the case files. They would have known. Exactly. That, yeah. And that's not even getting close to uh, her choices with the caretaker in episode one, which was also bad captaining. Why are we not doing a Star Trek Voyager podcast? I don't know. Because there's already a great one. Yeah. Because the Delta Flyers is the best Star Trek pod. Well, there's two Star Trek podcasts I love. I love Trek Politics um, with with Donald Trump's cousin. Mm -hmm. And um, and uh, I love uh, her book's great. She hates him. And, um, uh, and then I love the Delta Flyers, which is... Tom Tom and Harry's podcast, which is amazing. Yeah, but um, yeah, uh, yeah it was. Well, I'm trying to think of what what I can tell you about The Witcher to wrap up with. I did see Harvey and Henry talking about Warhammer <gasps> on set. That's I'm so excited to talk to. Well, first I want to talk to Harvey about Warhammer because that's you know what we talk about. But Henry Cavill like being so into something so niche that's just emerging and may become, depending on how they do the TV shows, may become mainstream is crazy did you could are you, you as a fan are you scared that they're gonna fuck it up um i yeah well the thing is i'm like a tourist in the world of warhammer i'm very much learning about it i think if henry cavill is involved with it he loves it so much i think he would not do a terrible script or he'd be like no the law says you can't do this um so yeah. trust in cavill but when you have that's why that's why witcher fans love him as well isn't it yeah. because he he was. So, yeah. He seems like he's been very adamant, yeah, about sticking to the books and the games and stuff. Yeah, but when Harvey and Henry were talking about Warhammer, how did you know? Could you decipher it, or were you like, what? What's going on? So Harvey, Harvey, and I, I can't remember what the order was, but Harvey and I went to the Comic Con, and like whenever there was a Warhammer person walking past, Harvey was like, <laughs> he's like, that's. Malkinzoid from the Quandark, blah, blah, blah. And I was like, oh, okay, all right, well, 
there's a Mandalorian. And like, you know, like my, my knowledge of it is, is so limited. Yeah. But I, uh, I'll be honest with you. I, I kind of thought, ah, fuck, I wish I knew about Warhammer. I wish, I, I wish that Henry was a Voyager fan. Ah, shit. Um, he, he might be and you just, you know, next season four, you'll have to say, what do you think of Janeway? He won't be there. Of course. Oh. Yeah. Well, Maybe Liam Hemsworth is a Janeway fan. That was my question for you, actually, is where do I start? with warhammer if i wanted to get into it what's like the base level fan entry that's such thing? an involved question i got into it by mistake doing a book club with my games club over lockdown and i am I, you, very used to inviting authors so i invited a warhammer author and we started reading books and the author we invited was dan abner who's also written doctor who episodes he's written red sonia comics guardians of the galaxy he originally picked those characters from marvel um, in the comics so that was my way in the books I am yet to play a game broadly as a concept people just you know shooting the shit out of each other it's not really my vibe um, I would I would love if Harvey would take you and play a game somewhere and I can film it and commentate because I've never played a game it's fascinating to see like because I remember growing up in Norwich and I think there still is a Warhammer shop, but you would walk past and like, it was such a club in the same way that going to punk shows was mm. a, a real uh, you know, gang of people, yeah. a clique. And it, um, I always remember being like sort of jealous that I wasn't in the Warhammer shop because it looked really fun. It's never too late. But have you ever done anything like Dungeons and Dragons or anything role playing? Well Okay. No, I think I auditioned for that as well. The Chris, oh, yeah, which because they they've just done a they did it with Chris Pine, didn't they? Yeah, yeah. Who again? I met you know I, I you don't know this, but I I left a pub once and I was hammered. And you know when you're like, I need to go and be sick now. <laughs> I remember. You know when you're that like I haven't been that drunk for a long time, but it was probably yeah. eight years ago, and I left the pub and bumped into a friend who was with Chris Pine. And I said, I just said to him in the lift, I was like, I've just reached that level of drunk where I need to go and throw up. And he was like, well, good luck. And I was like, oh, thanks. And then I walked away. I was like, how, how do I? He's so familiar. And then I got home and was like, it's Captain fucking Kirk. I just bumped into the Kelvin timeline Kirk and didn't reckon. I was so annoyed that I'd had that final yeah. glass of whatever it was. Like, Fuck, I could have like really nerded out with him about because I think Star Trek Beyond is the best of the new Star Trek movies and it gets so much flack. Mm. But I think Simon Pegg did like a phenomenal job sort of putting a televised show that he loved into a cinematic universe. Yeah. Um, it's such a great, great movie. And obviously the first Star Trek is great and Into Darkness has its sort of, has its problems. But after First Contact, I think Beyond is my favourite. And maybe Khan as well, but you know they're all you know different generations of the of the franchise but beyond is like great gosh maybe it's for the best because you could have got tongue-tied or said something really like like abstract at least now you've met him you've breathed the same air the next time you see him you'll be more relaxed possibly and not. sober yeah so yeah and then when that happens you can come back here and talk all about it I would love that. If I ever get on Star Trek, I promise I will come back. Well, I think we, I'm going to adopt you on my channel and we'll just check in and see what you're up to. But I would urge everybody to follow you on Insta and Twitter. And you're always... I, I don't don't bother with Twitter. I'm done with it. I'm, I don't use it anymore. But YouTube, follow me on YouTube because I'm... <laughs> yeah, I've started watching old music videos with the directors of the videos. And yeah. uh, it's been so much. I, I watched Guns N' Roses November Rain with Andy Moorhan, who directed it. Yeah. And it was like the most fun nerd thing to hear about how much of an insane shoot it was. Yeah. Um, I mean, yeah. The, when the, he was just laughing, going, oh, yeah, this was like seven million pounds. <laughs> <yeah>. but like, <laughs> OK. <laughs> so, yes, I will put a link to that video. Um, but Josh, thank you so, so much for being on my channel. It's great. Thank and, you for having me. Um, yeah, go subscribe to Joss's channel and we'll keep an eye on you. And thank you so much. Go and watch season three of The Witcher on Netflix. Netflix.
My friend Josh is best because